hiking 25 basis points at its last meeting, despite the recent bank failures of SVB and Signature. And as borrowing costs rise, what will the ripple effect be on residential and commercial real estate? Joining us now, Yale professor of economics, Robert Schiller. Professor, we're so happy to have you on the show today. Um, we're we're going to get a bevy of housing data this week, including Case Shiller Home Price Index tomorrow. Nice. We have this brewing debate about whether we've seen a bottom or even at least a stabilization in the housing market. How do you see it? Well, it's, it's uh, easy to forecast the short run in the housing market. Not so easy to forecast. If you're a long-term buyer, it's not clear. Uh, but home prices are, are very, very high. And... Uh, by historical standards, uh, I would extrapolate the downturn somewhat. Uh, it's going to continue. Uh, maybe if you have a chance to delay your purchase, it might be a good, a good time to do it. Uh, you might get it a little cheaper after another six months. Hmm. Um, I want to shift gears a little bit because you're one of the founders, you're one of the fathers of behavioral economics. And I want to get your thoughts on the banking turmoil that we've seen over the past several weeks, what it's going to mean to future credit availability, and just the role that behaviors, that attitudes have played in everything we've seen unfold. Yeah. Uh, one of, I, in my book, Nar Narrative Economics, I talk about uh, narratives of, of regarding financial panics or bank runs. And these were perennial narratives in the 19th century. As the century wore on, they got stronger and stronger. I think, the, I think the, you know, that's what a bank run kind of helps. It helps if the narrative is that banks are endangered. Uh, and so eventually Congress in 1913 uh, had to put a stop to this. It, it, like people were so worried about their banks. So they, uh, they created the Federal Reserve. Uh, and, uh, but even, the, you know, it's, we give the Fed a really tough problem, how to deal with this fundamentally psychological uh, uh, reaction to a, a, a narrative. Hmm. Robert, I want to go back to housing for a moment. How does this affordability standoff that we see in residential real estate end? I mean, we've got extremely low inventory, high interest rates. Is it going to take higher unemployment to break landlords' ability to, to increase rents, and from there the investments don't pencil out anymore, and, and therefore they got to dump them, and, and you know inventory rises and prices drop, or something else. Yeah, well, that's uh, the capitalist system <laughs> with a central bank. Uh, I think it works pretty well most of the time, uh, and uh, I, I, I wouldn't tinker too much with it. Uh, we have smart people on the Fed, and the Treasury Secretary I admire, Janet Yellen. Uh, they, uh, they may have to accept, however, I think this is as uh, Jerome Powell has put it, they may have to accept something of a recession. But, but uh, for the housing market, how should the people at home who are maybe thinking about selling a home, you kind of address thinking about buying a home, how should they expect this to play out? If you have a chance to sell your house now, even if it's for a little less than you wanted? Do you go ahead and do it because, you know, higher inventories are inevitably coming? Uh, I wouldn't say inevitably. Uh, I would say that it's likely to see some more declines. So, uh, but I hate to, you know, uh, home purchase is such a family decision. I hate to uh, overreact. Uh, so we do have a declining market at the moment. Uh, but, you know, there are costs to uh, not selling at the right time, the convenient time, or you might lose a house that you liked uh, to somebody else. Uh, so I, I don't think it's an easy answer to that question. Mm. 